Most people associate Mullah Sheikh with the lighthouse. However, there is more to this hill than meets the eye. This peninsula, situated on the southernmost tip of St. Lucia, faces the Caribbean Sea on one side and the Atlantic Ocean on the other. Mullah Sheikh is a hill with multiple uses. The historical, geological, and socio-economic facets of Mullah Sheikh all come together to make the hill the fascinating place that it is. At Mullah Sheikh, it stands out 800 feet out of, the, out of the water. That rock, if you were to date it, and rocks can be dated because of the carbon content, that rock dates so many millions of years older than the rest of the middle of St. Lucia. It's as old as the northern part of St. Lucia, which means it must have been separate at some point. Now, the theory is that this lava flow actually joined up with Mulashik and created a, an extension of the land when previously it was part of an island. Mulashik rises from swampy or poorly drained plains and levels out to a sharp cliff face at the extreme south. The hill is volcanic and the annual rainfall at Mulashik is low. These factors contribute to the interesting and rich biodiversity that exists there. Well, in Molashik, there are several vegetational types. Mm -hmm. You have, for the most part, dry xerophytic forest. Okay, nice. But you also, have, you also have dry secondary forest, and to some degree, littoral woodland with grassland and stuff. Mm -hmm. This area has a variety of plants. I think there are over 100 plant species that can be found in the Molashik area. Mm -hmm. And you will see uh, many types of um, cactus species. As a matter of fact, we have the most abundant species there is this one here, called the organ pipe cactus. You also have a very small dwarf variety mm -hmm. called the, the Opuntia, mm -hmm. or Opuntia wentiana. Mm -hmm. And these are, you know, they're very dangerous. I mean, you shouldn't get in contact with them. Mm -hmm. But they help protect the landscape in some degree because they don't have leaves, they store water, and they spread over the area and protect and prevent the area from being trampled by livestock. As I know, you have livestock free grazing in this area. In addition to having a diversity of flora, Molashik also boasts a wide range of bird species, since this peninsula provides a nesting ground for birds. Okay, because Molashik is virtually untouched in many parts, birds would nest there and it's a very important nesting area, not only for the land birds, the common land birds, but also for the, for the um, seabirds that come to nest on the cliffs. Because those areas are remote, they, they have very little disturbance, and the birds need that kind of peace and, and tranquility to raise the young in peace. That's the one over there. Sit. Yeah. The richness and diversity of Mulashik is also enhanced by its rich history. The history of Mulashik extends as far back as the days of slavery to the presence of Americans in Vieuxfort. At Mulashik, there are a number of historical remnants. They reoccupied both Mulashik and Mont Liblin near Labrie for the purpose of tracking missiles being tested from Cape Canaveral in Florida. And as they went across the Atlantic, um, they used tremendous communication facilities and so on, especially on Mulashik, very complicated, with all sorts of wiring and stuff. And Unfortunately, I suppose it was discovered that it was not effective because it should be too far off the trajectory track because these things would end up in the Atlantic in safe, um, unused waters. Since it should be too far away, they um, eventually scrapped it and um, I think went to Ascension Island in the southern Atlantic, which is more strategically located. I actually discovered a possible cave in Hideaway, just on the, I think it's the northern, the northeastern side of um, Mulashik, of the lighthouse, there's a series of water-worn caves, which could easily accommodate one or two people or even more, um, 
to give them shelter, you know. I also found another one on the little trail I was working on going down to the middle of Mulishik where there's a lovely savanna and wonderful view of St. Vincent to the south. Um, it's indicative of what the brigands would have used with a covering between the rocks, like a shelter, so it shelter them from the rain. So there's no doubt in my mind that um, they most likely were there and used this as a, as a lookout, a communication station. Quite apart from the fact that Mulashik provides a scenic view, it is also a beautiful place for people to live. Mulashik also serves as a telecommunications base. As a result of its geographical location, the hill houses a number of repeaters and satellites for all radio and television stations. Higher up the telecommunications section can be found the lighthouse, which was built in 1911. This lighthouse provides 30 miles of light. It also acts as a landmark for heavy traffic between St. Lucia and St. Vincent. Major studies have been conducted to determine the tourism potential of Mulashik. Mulashik does present that beautiful landscape. However, when you look at the fact that visitors without coming to, to Mulashik are very happy with the landscape that they see without coming to the south, it means that you need to do a little more to get visitors to make that drive down to Mulashik. Which, which takes us to the point that what you need, you need accommodation. You need to increase your accommodation badly in the south if you want to take advantage of the scenery and the landscape that Mulashik offers. Mulashik is a peninsula which is easily identifiable but not very well known. The many functions it performs is virtually a mystery to many people. It is a place well worth exploring. So in your free time, come and see all that Mulashik has to offer.